And on the phone with us, of course, is Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group. And I don't know about you, Amy, but as um sitting here in Gillette, Wyoming right now, the global warming is hitting us like full force, blowing sideways and burying us. What's it like down in Shan? Uh, we have warm weather, and it's now getting cold here as well. Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear warm weather. No, seriously, you got warm. what's the temperature down there? We have had the strangest week, Glenn. We, yeah. We've gone from very, very cold, 20 snowing, to last night, in the middle of the night, it was up to 41 degrees. <clears> and now we've had these Chinook winds coming in, and anyway. Right. But, yeah, cold, warm, cold, warm. That's been our pattern. Okay, so you're supposed to be getting some of what we're getting right now, then. Yes, the cold okay. is on its way back. No, I just wanted to share it with you. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm so glad. So we were discussing before uh, you called in, or before I even got on the air today, we were discussing some of what we might want to talk about, uh, and it all has to do with education, of course, but one of the things uh, has to do with charter schools in the state of Wyoming. And for those people who might be listening in other states right now, uh, pay close attention, because what Wyoming do, your state could do too. So charter schools in the state of Wyoming, what do they have in store for us, and is it good? Um, it, yes, potentially this could be very good. So what we've heard, there's been a news report that Representative Sue Wilson uh, is going to be bringing forward a bill to change the authorizer uh, on who authorizes charter schools into existence, right? Currently in Wyoming, we have a horrible system. Uh, the person who is allowed to authorize is the local school district. Uh, they're the only folks who can authorize a charter school, which you can probably imagine pretty quickly why that doesn't work very well. Yeah. And it's why we've consistently got D's and F's from national groups on our charter school law. Oh, okay, now let, let's take a look at uh, who the group has been up until now. I mean, is it anybody that you've uh, trusted to approve charter schools? Now, and, let, and let's be clear also for people out there, we're not talking private schools. Uh, charter schools operate how? They're public schools. Okay. So they're public charter schools. They're different from your traditional public school in that they uh, get a charter of operation to exist. Um, and so someone someone is given that authority to charter them. Um, and then they are usually able to waive uh, quite a few different requirements and regulations that a traditional school doesn't get to waive. Uh, that just allows them to be different. Um, they oftentimes are not unionized. They oftentimes are lighter on their feet. They will offer very different curriculum from the traditional charter school. So here in Wyoming, we have uh, a Montessori public charter charter school in Laramie. If anyone knows about the Montessori um, curriculum, it's a very specific kind of curriculum. We have a classical education charter school that's also in Laramie. And then here in Cheyenne recently, they got a new school started, Poder Academy, which has a very interesting, they go to school from 8 to 5, they tutor on the weekends, mm -hmm. they stress test, tennis and chess as their ex extracurricular activities. So these schools are just different from what the traditional public school right. offers. They are public schools, however. Yeah, but very think outside the box in their style. For I mean, I've, I've been in a couple and I've been very impressed with because, I mean, you, you know me well enough by now, Amy. I like it when people try new things. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Let's try new things. If the old things aren't working, there's got to be a better way to do it. So That's right. Yeah, what's been the problem then with getting new charter schools into Wyoming? What's the holdup? The, the main issue is the... Um, the authorizer. That's that's one of the biggest issues. So in Wyoming right now, under the current law, the authorizer, the person who gets to say yay or nay on whether the school is going to start, is as, as I said, the local school district, so the local school board. Um, and uh, so obviously that doesn't work. And I always use the analogy: it's a little bit like giving your local Lowe's the authority to approve or not approve a Home Depot. Okay. Um, it isn't going to work, and it doesn't work. And there's a hostility that's you know. Um, inherent in creating a system like that. The local school districts have consistently in Wyoming struck down schools, not charter schools, not based on the merit of the school, but on the sense that they're going to come in and compete with them. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask now. If a charter school, because I remember, let's say, North Carolina, a charter school had opened up, and the way they had it set up in North Carolina was if a student left the regular public school and went to a charter school, the money went with the student, which meant the public school was now short on money for that student. Is that what's happening in Wyoming? Is that the problem? Correct. I mean, the, the other issue um, that this bill won't address but needs to be addressed is exactly what you just said, Glenn. Wyoming has this centralized education finance system where we fund 
basically a system. So we fund, you know, there's a block grant and we fund down to the district. The district gets a total number and it's very much geared towards systems, districts, buildings, you know, large entities instead of all the way down to the student level, what we call backpack funding, decentralizing these funds so that really the districts look at the funds as money that's directly for the child and they basically look that way. That's not how it works. So right now, using the old system that we have, the centralized system and that they had in North Carolina, yes, uh, they see it simply as losing dollars. They don't think of it as anything other than that. You know, the taxpayer doesn't think of it that way, Glenn. The taxpayer thinks that this is a public student, public school student, who they're going to, their taxes go to pay for that public school student. It doesn't really matter to them whether they're sitting in building A or building B. It's just taxpayer dollars that's going to that child. And that's the way it should be looked at. But that's, you know, when you have this centralized system, it becomes a competition for dollars. Okay, so let, let's get into the good news here. What exactly is happening that might be good news in this legislative session? So this bill, uh, the Representative Wilson is looking to move the authorizer to a single statewide authorizer, the Wyoming Community College Commissioners, uh, this board that is appointed by the governor who uh, oversees the Wyoming Community College Commission. And this is similar to what we've seen other states doing as far as charter authorizers. Um, they typically try to create or go find an independent group, usually outside of the K-12 system, who can authorize charters. And I think, you know, I have not seen the bill because the bill has not been filed. I've just read news stories. This could be something very good for parents who would like to see more options. Okay, so the outside person or people would come from where exactly? From in Wyoming or somewhere else? Yeah, the Wyoming Community College Commission. Okay. Um, so that's a group of folks who are appointed by the governor who lo who oversee the Wyoming Community College Commission, which is a commission that sits over all of the community colleges in Wyoming. So they represent regions from all over Wyoming. Now, I'm just curious about the process. Some uh, About a year ago, I met a couple of ladies that wanted to start a charter school up in Gillette. Now, I don't know whatever happened to it. I didn't follow up on the thing. But it sounded to me like it was a process that was giving them a bit of a headache. Is it hard to get a charter school started in the state? It's very hard. Okay. Yeah. I well, mean, you have a, it's a tremendous uphill battle. And obviously one of the battles, that, as we've just been talking about, the biggest problem is that you have to go to your local school district to get permission. You know, chartering a, a charter school is not as simple as you would think it is. Either you are starting a charter school. You are you have to have a five-year business plan. The application itself can be three, four, five hundred pages long because really you're creating a school on paper. So it, yeah. it's not as simple as one would think. It takes a lot of time and work uh, for parents who really want to do this. You know, they're willing to do the work for the application, but when you add, you add on the fact that they then have to go to a district that's probably hostile, it just is, it's very insurmountable. Why would an application be about 500 pages long? Because they have, there's a ton of requirements about uh, what the school is. So it's not just, you know, here's our school, we have this really cool idea, can we start it? Um, but it has to basically outline everything about the school from the, from the, you know, the lights to the staff to staffing to policies on staff to, you know, every possible thing you could think of that goes into running a school, you know, having a budget, uh, anything like that goes into this application process. Okay. I, I just hate that much paperwork. I mean, usually, No, it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's very onerous. There's no doubt yeah. about it, and it is a lot. Yeah. I, I would bet if we sat down and took a look at it, we could probably cut that in half at least. You know. But, right. yeah, yeah, you and I definitely, Glenn, could cut yeah. that in half. <clears throat> yeah, I, no, I bet. So. Okay, let me, I, I teased before you came on that you were coming on, and I wanted to, for those people who are interested in Common Core in the state of Wyoming, I was hoping for some kind of an update on that because school is in session now and you and I were during the course of the summer we'd even attended some common core meetings around the state but I haven't really heard a whole lot since we got a legislative session coming up Are we gonna see anything about common core in this next session well I don't I, 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 I don't want to give any secrets away Glenn I haven't seen anything yet but okay. I suspect this will not be a, a, a session that we won't see something I think we will definitely be seeing a bill again there are mentions of or issues around the Common Core in bills that have already come out. There's a uh, joint accountability bill that's um, about to be filed that the uh, joint accountability um, committee has been working on over the past year. 
this is continuing on this whole accountability effort uh, scheme, as I like to call it, that the legislature has been trying to do over the last couple of years. In there, there's a requirement that the state is going to come in and, and essentially um, review and audit all of our local school districts every five years to be certain that the curriculum and assessments that your district is using is aligned to the Common Core, to the state standards. And you know, remember, the state standards are made up of more than just the Common Core, but the Common Core is what is being tested, English language arts and math. So um, you know, just to be very clear, the legislature continues to push to, to militantly align and hang on to the Common Core. What about the data center that we've been on about for who knows how since I've known you? Yeah, they are still they're still working. We've been waiting quite a long time to get um, you know the state a dictionary. Um, the one thing I can tell you that I'm sure you're very much aware of the wheels of bureaucracy move grindingly slow. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of things that we're still waiting to hear about, but they so far are still trying to move forward. Okay, because you know sometimes the wheels moving slow like that could be to our advantage when it comes to fighting something. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm exactly in this case. It's all good for parents. The longer it takes them to do this, the, the safer their kids are and their kids' data is. Um, but it's not. It is not going away anytime soon. They have been working on a few data privacy issues. None of it looks that promising, and none of it is going to do. I think what what they're hoping it. Will do. Okay. Has the governor said anything different about Common Core? I mean, now that he's back in office, and again we got another session coming our way, has he given any clues or just not talked about it? No, it's you know he hasn't really. I mean, it's, it continues to be the same line. You know, he throws out the red herring that he's for um, high standards, as though that's the issue. Like mm -hmm. you know, nobody. You know, there's people who would actually say, no, I want terrible standards. Sure. So yeah. no, he continues the same old line of throwing out the red herring. I'm for high standards. I only want high standards. What's your problem? Well, it seems to me, because I was watching the same thing when it came to uh, Medicaid expansion, he wants the money. And well, <laughs> that, that could be a likely motive, Glenn. Yeah, um, yeah I think he would, in, in the context of the Common Core, what he, do, what he doesn't want is a lot of heartache. Uh, and, and removing the Common Core, as, we, as you well know, and we've discussed many times on your program, is not an easy task. And it's going to require a lot of headache. And rightfully so. The state needs to get out of this Common Core nonsense. All right, I'm talking with Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group and more with her in just a moment. Hang in there. I mean, today we have Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group who's down in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the weather is about to, trust me, you're not going to like what's coming your way. If it's anything like what I'm getting right now, Amy, this is just not good. The highways are closed down up here. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. And according to Dan in our front office, they closed themselves. Nobody closed them. So, all right. <clears throat> you know, it's bad when that happens. All right. So I, I've got to ask you, I know this wasn't on our little topic list that we had talked about, but I'm curious. We have a new superintendent of public instruction. We do. How's that working out? Well, this is like day, what, three since she was sworn in. Yeah, but the um, Republicans are already screwing everything up in Washington, <laughs> D.C., so I just kind of figured, you know. Well, there's, there's a little bit of settling in, I understand. There's some time to get things settled in, and, but... Uh, I, well, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what the new superintendent has to say about House Joint Resolution 2, which is this, this um, resolution that the Joint Education Committee advanced in December to try and bring a constitutional amendment to remove the superintendent of public instruction. <laughs> um, that's, you know, as if we have not heard enough about Senate File 104 over the last two years, here we go again. Now, why are we going again here with this? I thought we had already settled this, and the voters were quite quite clear, and the courts were clear. Well, the courts were quite quite clear. I think you know it'll be very interesting should this even make it through the legislature. Remember, they have to have a two thirds vote to get it through. It's got to right. be uh, to to be a constitutional amendment, so that's a pretty high bar. And I think a lot of legislators are pretty darn weary of this whole subject. It just, it, but it continues on with this obsession, Glenn, to solidify power in one place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Wyoming's not the only state that's going through this. This is something the National Education Association, the teacher, National Teachers Union, has really been pushing. They really want to rem they really want to alienate voters uh, away from education policy. And you hear this, you hear people talk about even folks who are running for office about how it's you know too political. The education system is too political, which is absolute insanity right. to even say that in our country. That's you know these are taxpayer dollars. Of course, it's a political system. Um, so, but this is not, not is not new. I just hope that it is 
soundly defeated and quickly. Well, sure. And I remember, we've talked about this before, but I remember when this whole thing with SF-104 got started. And that would be the last time that the governor ever came on this program because I just don't think he wants to anymore. But I asked him a very serious question. I don't think I was a jerk to him. I just asked him a very serious question. Uh, why is it that you're trying to take our vote away? Because, And that's what callers to the show were saying. We don't want our vote taken away. This is our vote. We want to be able to choose who the superintendent of public construction, the school mark want to be able to make that vote. And Governor Mead said, oh, yeah, we hear that. Well, apparently not. And apparently there's quite a few other people in Cheyenne who are not getting that message either. So, so it would seem. I'm, I'm hoping this bill, though, as I said, goes away as quickly as possible and isn't, you know, that we don't spend a huge a lot of legislative time debating it because it yeah. really is not a thought we want to continue I, I think on. we're all tired of this, too. Any idea, any names as to who's pushing this bill? Well, it was a joint. It's a joint education bill. Uh, there was a lot of brouhaha when it when it went through uh, up in uh, Jackson. Actually, they had their meeting in Jackson in December. Uh, no one was aware the bill was coming, and it was all sort of it was foisted on the committee uh, very quickly. The that afternoon, uh, I became aware, but just I, I was in Cheyenne watching the Twitter feeds and became aware that it was happening. So there was a lot of brouhaha. It came quickly. It wasn't, uh, it was a big surprise to a lot of the committee members and um, it was basically the two chairmen, uh, the uh, outgoing representative Matt Teeters and who is no longer in office and uh, Senator Hank Coe. Okay. Well, Hank Coe doesn't surprise me on that one. All right. Well, the reason I asked that is I'm noticing now that when they, they used to have on uh, bills, the name of the people who are sponsoring the bills. Now it's the name of the committee. Right. Well, there's, yeah, there's committee bills and there's privately sponsored bills. This yeah. one will be a committee bill for now. I mean, the, yeah, it's a committee bill. So, but it's a uh, House Joint Resolution 2 and uh, it's out there. It's actually public and live now. You can go see it and read it and folks can start calling their uh, legislators. I'm talking with Amy Emmons from Wyoming Liberty Group in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I just want to, well, the reason I bring that up is it seemed to me, but correct me if I'm wrong, that they found a clever way of getting bills uh, that may be unpopular through a committee, and yet you can't find out who wrote the bill or who's behind the bill, so you can properly blame them for it. Well, that's, this, that's definitely an issue with this bill, Glenn. And there was a lot of discussion after what happened in Jackson, and I'm hoping that we'll see some rule changes because, you know, uh, the legislature, when they gavel out at the end of their session each year, they go into what's called interim work, and they work in committees on bills, and they typically try to be all over the state of Wyoming, so they, they may have some in Gillette, so folks, Wyoming citizens can attend these meetings and can see what the committee may be working on for a bill. That's the way the process should work. It should take basically a whole year to work through some of these large committee bills. Um, it, so when you have two chairmen just throw down a bill at their last meeting in December, a month away from the legislative session, that's I think highly inappropriate. There's mm -hmm. a huge lack of transparency. They've had they've had the Joint Education Committee had other committee meetings uh, earlier in the year. They should have been discussing it then. They should have said, "Here's a bill. We're thinking about this bill. We want to you know get public input." They did none of that. That's real. That's a real issue. And I'm hoping that the legislature will change their rules. They have internal rules about how this works, but I'm hoping they'll change that rule and basically say that you, the, they, the committee cannot bring a bill less than, you know, let's say two weeks, four weeks, mm. whatever it may be, so that it can actually be made public and people can see it. I was having a discussion with a few friends a couple of days ago about what the proper role of government is, and I think we really do need to get back to a state where it's clearly defined, this is all government is allowed to do. That would stop most of these bills in the first place. If they took a look at the bill they were writing, and here's the charter, if you will, oh, gee, we're not allowed to do that. I guess we can't write this bill. We wouldn't have all this garbage showing up in the first place. That was supposed to be in our Constitution, but I guess they forgot about that. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we got another legislative session coming up. What are you going to be focusing on? You know, I'll be following a lot of education issues, uh, and folks can go to our education website, which is uh, wylibertyineducation.org. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our regular web is wyliberty.org, and this is wylibertyineducation.org. I'll be doing a weekly podcast, Glenn, and I've got the first one that will probably be going up tomorrow, just kind of going through bills, letting folks know what's 
you know, what's out there, what's happening that week, giving them a bit of a weekly update, because you know it, things happen fast and furious in the legislature. Oh, yeah. So what you need to do then is send me links, and I'll make sure that Campbell County Reserve gets those links as well. So both Great. the readers to the newspaper and listeners to this radio show can take a look at that podcast while you're updating everybody. Wonderful. I'll do it, Glenn. All right. Thanks for coming on, Amy. Thank you so much. Amy Edmonds, Wyoming Liberty Group. And as she said, you can find her information at yliberty.org and look for their education page, as she mentioned. And as she does the podcast thing, I'll make sure that you have links to that podcast as well.